Daniel, the eighth lesson, the fall of 2021. We're looking now, last week we looked at events take place during the middle of the tribulation period. And, you know, remember, when we say middle of the tribulation period and such, we're not talking about one exact day. Uh, it could cover, you know, months within the middle uh, time of the period as far as some of the events and all that take place. During the second half is what Matthew now refers to as the great tribulation. Uh, it's all bad, remember? All, the whole seven years is bad. I've heard some people describe the first three and a half years as time of uh, world peace, and then the second half as uh, the tribulation. But it's, it's all part of the tribulation, because even in the beginning, remember the Antichrist rides on, on the white horse carrying a bow, a weapon. And that's when he will take over kingdoms, uh, uh, get rid of three of the leaders of it. The Holy Spirit will no longer restrain evil. And so sin will be rampant throughout the first three and a half years. And while there might, uh, may not be any world wars going on at that point, there will be a lot of conflict between individuals. And so it's going to be a very bad time. Uh, Economy-wise, things will look good. Uh, as far as being prosperous, they'll probably be very, very prosperous during that time. But then the middle comes and changes everything. And so Satan's cast out of heaven. He takes out his anger upon Israel. Uh, remember Matthew 24 says, if you are in Jerusalem when the abomination of desolation takes place, you get out as quick as you can. Because you may not be able to go back to your house and get anything. And so it starts getting really, really bad at that point. The earthquake there, but not only the earthquake there, but we talk about other earthquakes. We talk about uh, mountains moved out of places. We talk about worldwide tsunamis uh, that God finally has to send angels down to stop so it doesn't destroy the world. And so everything's calm for a very brief interlude. But then you've got one-third of the sun, one-third of the moon, one-third of the stars, and we've got uh, one-third of the fresh water, one-third of the salt water, one-third of the vegetation. All these will end up being destroyed during the middle time period, which will... Uh, create havoc upon the whole world. Uh, we know that the moon affects the tides. So if the moon is one third destroyed, what's going to happen to the the environment? I mean, we really have no idea of what it will be, what God will allow to happen, or what He won't allow to happen. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of devastation. Uh, Japan, uh, an earthquake hits Japan, and tsunamis uh, go for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles around it. So if that happens throughout the whole world, imagine what it's going to be like. And so now uh, Daniel says it's a time of trouble such as never was. Remember Joel talks about the tribulation period and likens the current day uh, things that's going on with the locust plague that have completely wiped out all the vegetation in Israel. And then he reminds the people that you know, you've never seen anything as bad as this before, but... This is just a sign of what's going to happen in the future. It's going to get worse than this. And so, again, it's just the, the warning here. The time of Jacob's trouble, uh, Jeremiah refers to it as that, because the, the primary goal of Satan is to destroy Israel in the tribulation period. Uh, but that doesn't mean he, he won't affect the world, because it definitely will affect all the world at that point. No nation will be able to escape this. It's not like... It's just trouble in the Middle East, and we don't, we don't have to worry about it. No, it's about the whole world. You? This part right here that talks about, um, but at that time your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Can you not use that in saying that we will be delivered from the tribulation? Uh, what's the whole context of that? Well, it's at the beginning of uh, Daniel 12 says there will be a time of distress such has not happened from the beginning of the nations until then, but at that time your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust on the earth will awake, oh. some to everlasting life. Uh, I'd have to go back to make sure that this is... I'm just wondering... Uh, it may be talking about the people within the tribulation period at, at this point. Because Michael's standing up there, uh, it would be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. What's that saying? 
and these people shall be delivered. No, it, it wouldn't be necessary for the rapture. There's other passages we can get okay. that would show that. Uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4. Uh, yeah, 4 and 5 both. Mm -hmm. One talks about whether we live or die, and the other says whether we wake or sleep. And some people say wake and sleep means live and die, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. Uh, it, it means whether you are watchful or not watchful when the rapture occurs, you'll be taken up. So, meaning if you're in, in fellowship with God when your rapture occurs, you'll be raptured. If you're out of fellowship with God, but you're saved when your rapture occurs, you'll still be raptured. Mm -hmm. So, so rapture is all based upon our works. Because there are, are some people who believe that the tribulation period, uh, I call it the popcorn rapture. Uh, they believe if you're right with God when your rapture occurs, you go up. And as throughout the tribulation period, when you get right with God, you'll go up. So, pop, 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 throughout the, you know, whenever they get right. And that's, and 1 Thessalonians 5 uh, verifies that, that. That's not true. What will be going on in the world? Uh, more so now in the middle to the end because rebellion against the professing church. Remember now at the beginning, everything's great. You know, religion's you know, holding hands, singing Kumbaya, and everything's just wonderful. Uh, but now, with the Antichrist uh, uh, proclaimed to be Jehovah, the Muslims will break down, and then world religion will break down, and the professing church at that time in Revelation 17 is called Babylon the Great Horse. Uh, the Antichrist has become the world's ruler, we know at the beginning, uh, but he'll have support of that Western Confederacy. Uh, all the Western nations that will join with him. Uh, so his army uh, basically covers probably half the population of the world. Uh, right now, I don't know what the numbers are, but I think Islam is something around 2 billion people, I think is what they claim. So that's one-fourth of the population. Uh, with one-fourth of the population uh, being Islam, then you have some who have been raptured out, so that brings the number down. Uh, then you have other people who are dying at that, that point. So it's possible by the time we get to the middle tribulation period that uh, half the population, I mean, could be more, you know, even three billion by that time. So if half the population is Muslim, half the population is Gentile uh, or Jewish, uh, then you know, that's a huge army on both sides. And we know 82% uh, of the Muslims alone will die. Uh, we don't know how many on the other side, but um, you know, you might, it might even equal that. So 82% of uh, 3 billion, something like 2.4 billion people. Um, yeah, 8, 16, 24, yeah, 2 point, around 2.4 billion, 2.5 billion people uh, will die in 